Hello again. It's starting to get um, pretty gray out here. I hope it doesn't rain, so I'll try and get through this quickly. Oh, oh my joking around. Okay, so today, this came with, um, we just finished reading of Coral and Whale. Okay, now these, you can look at these stories anytime, anytime these cards come up, because I'm only going to do these stories once. So I did timestamp yesterday where each story begins. So, you know, wait, if, uh, you know, say, Great Mystery comes up, but it came with a different totem, right? You can still go see Great Mystery Story and then the other totem, because, you know, there's not always going to come up with Swan, right? So I will timestamp them to when each story starts, uh, just like I did yesterday. So, <clears throat> Excuse me, we start with Great Mystery. And that was cool because Great Mystery came up a lot in Original Source in both those other cards, right? It's cool how these all go together. Like I say, it doesn't matter which day you're watching that's relevant at any time. So Great Mystery, number 37. Isn't that like 10? Oh, that's 12. 10, 12, whatever. Okay. Original Source of Creation, the void of all that is. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for my gifts. Eternal mystery, touch my heart. In beauty, may I walk. Sacred mystery, be my guide. So I may walk my talk. Infinite source, remain with me. So I may always know the warmth of eternal flame deep within my soul. Original source. Okay, this is who we're on right now. This is the path. And this was our Feminine energies today, August 29th. All righty. The original source of creation, this is the teaching, is called Great Mystery by Native Americans. Great Mystery called uh, Swinio, Swinio, S-W-E-N-I-O, tomato, tomato, I don't know, in our Seneca tongue. Okay, great mystery called Suenio in our Seneca tongue cannot be limited as creator of great spirit. Cannot be limited and is the creator and great spirit. <laughs> oh, the great mystery is the creator of great spirit. Oh, let's read that correctly now. Hmm, because that, that changes it, doesn't it? He is the creator of great spirit. So the great mystery created great spirit. Even Great Spirit has a creator. Interesting. So anyway, many native people also call upon the Great Spirit when praying. However, these are two different things in our Seneca tradition. The Great Mystery lives in everything, is everything, and encompasses everything in creation. Being the original source of creation, Great Mystery created all things in beauty, harmony, interdependence. Each facet of creation was, is, and will always be. The forms may change, but the energy of creation is self-regenerative and eternal. Inside of this infinite creation that is great mystery, there is a vibral core or primal energy source. That is the great spirit or creative principle. The two are different. Both great mystery and great spirit are individually complete, unique, and independent of each other. Woo. Woo -hoo. Mm. Just to make a point, there comes the winds. Beautiful. 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 Loving it. Thank you. Thank you. Just to let us know, give us that extra gush. Right. So they are independent of each other. And what did I was say? Unique and independent. Great mystery created great spirit to direct the creative flows of the universe, which include all universes all levels of consciousness, all understanding, and all life. The key for seekers who wish to know the answers of the void is that great mystery does not need to be solved. Is it possible to solve it? I don't think so. It does not need to be solved. As we explore 
and discover the mysteries further, we learn that more is created and allowed to evolve. Trying to figure out all the answers to the great mystery is foolish and impossible because we are part of that infinite, progressive creation. These concepts are alien to the boat people who came from Europe to the shores of Turtle Island. When these white eyes began to understand the language of Native Americans and try to conceptualize Indian understanding regarding great mystery, the limits of their religions blocked their paths of knowing. The white idea of God was rather primitive in that most Europeans believed that God was one, was more or less human with many extra abilities. The old man sitting on the throne at the top of the mountain, right? The red race was more expansive and all-encompassing in their views of original source of creation. Native Americans had been taught through more than a hundred thousand years of oral history that all of creation and each individual life form was an expression of and contained great mystery. A part of great mystery lives in everything and knows no boundaries or limits. Every life form has free will to co-create with the original source in beauty and truth or in ugliness and despair or in ugliness or despair. It's free choice. The Eastern tribes of Native America tried to communicate the understandings of great mystery without success to French trappers who were among the first to learn sign language and some native tongues. The concept of all life coming from the thought world, which is the spirit world, then being manifested in physical forms on Mother Earth was not fully understood. Since these concepts were limited by the Christian backgrounds of the settlers, the original source was interpreted by the Bow people as one great spirit equal to the white idea of God. The joke among the native people is that according to the white understanding, in the beginning was the word, and it was misunderstood. The misunderstanding of great mystery was handed onto the descendants of the red race when they were forced to learn English language in boarding schools. The unfortunate use of great mystery, whoo, chills, the wind comes again. The unfortunate use of great spirit as the term for all of great mystery has created a limited use of native wisdom, even among Native Americans. Every life form has one common mission as well as individual ones, as well as their individual ones. Each life form is created to learn to be an equal contributor to the beauty of the world, of the whole. The purpose of the common mission is to discover who you are, why you are here, what talents you can use to assist the whole, and how you are going to go about it. The mission of discovery is the sacred path of beauty that allows every living creature to express uniqueness in a way that exemplifies harmony and truth. The human race is the only one of all our relations that has lost the inner knowing about its purpose. The two leggeds have been given much assistance by great mystery since they must have the answers of the common mission before understanding the value of their individual missions. They must uh, answer the questions of the common mission before understanding the value of their individual missions. This assistance has come in the form of teachers who are all our relations. The common misunderstanding that frightened the missionaries who came to save Native America was that the red race was a pagan race. I suppose since American Indians did not acknowledge Jesus, the common consensus was that the red race was primitive, savage, and pagan in or orientation. And I learned that pagan just meant you didn't live in Rome back in the times when that first word came up. That's all it meant, was that you were a farmer and you didn't live in Rome. Anyway, so from the native point of view, 
great mystery is all. The, the, the aspects of creation that are manifested by great mystery are the sacred parts of the world that are here to serve and be honored in that service. Native Americans do not worship idols, but use sacred medicine objects of their totems as reminders of the relations assisting their evolution on this earth walk. The red race sees great mystery as the life force it all of creation and not as an angry or jealous God. Great spirit is seen as an unlimited creative force within great mystery that feeds all of creation all the time. Nothing in Seneca wisdom limits great mystery or great spirit to gender, form, texture, color, or intent. All creations are part of great mysteries whole, just as every cell in the human body has a different function. And yet together those cells make up a carbon combustion unit that houses a spirit with a unique identity. All human ideas are birthed from the spirit inside the human body, are fed to the brain, and then acted upon through the will of the total being. All ideas in creation come from great mystery, are gathered by great spirit, and then are used to feed the rest of creation. To limit the power of creation in ourselves or others is a human concept. If we acknowledge the limitlessness of great spirit, we must acknowledge that this life force is also part of our makeup because we are created by that same original source. Now the application, how to apply this in our lives. The great mystery card tells us the original source is the creator of all life and that we are created in that likeness. We are free willed co-creators, free willed co-creators who become the source of all we choose to experience in this life. The source of all we choose to experience in this life. The buck stops here. We are totally, we are totally responsible for all our joys and all our pain. In receiving this card, you're being reminded to give gratitude for all of your lessons. It changes any pain to gain. Focus on your creative capacity and you can change anything. It may be time to drop any blame, shame, or regret and take charge of your life. The victim role doesn't suit two leggeds. We are created, whoo tingles, in the image of an infinite creator and therefore are limitless co-creators. In all cases, great mystery will continue to confound and astound us every time we try to figure it all out. Stop your mind's chatter and listen to the source. Original source shows us that the mystery lives within us and contains all the answers we need to find along the sacred path. The sacred path of beauty is experiencing the mystery of life without having to control the outcome from our tunnel vision command post. Go with the flow and watch the glory of limitless co-creation. After all, Great mystery is the divine plan, and everything is on schedule. Right on, right on. Okay, skip right over to the swan now. I have my kiddos starting to get at me, and then we still got to read two more. So, swan with grace. The graceful swan. He was an ugly duckling, he or she, and grew to this beautiful swan. So the great mystery, the original source, 
do that so you can see a regional source great mystery you can co-create with that grace and ease right do it like that swan the power of woman entering sacred space us is our female energy what's the month yes touching the future yet to come bringing eternal grace little swan so here's a here's the teachings we have here Little swan flew through the here we go again. Little swan flew through the dream time looking for the future. She rested for a moment in the coolness of the pond, looking for a way to find entry, find the entry point to the future. This was a moment of confusion for Swan, as she knew that she had happened into dreamland by accident. This was her first flight alone, and she was a bit concerned by the dream time landscape. As Swan looked high above Sacred Mountain, she saw the biggest swirling black cloud she had ever seen. Dragonfly came flying by, and Swan stopped to ask him about the black hole. Dragonfly said, Swan, that is the doorway to the other planes of imagination. I have been guardian of the illusions for many, many moons. If you want to enter there, you would have to ask permission and earn the right. Swan was not so sure that she wanted to enter the black hole. She asked Dragonfly what was necessary for her to earn entry. Dragonfly replied, You must be willing to accept whatever the future holds as it is presented without trying to change Great Spirit's plan. Swan looked at her ugly little duckling body and then answered, I will be happy to abide by Great Spirit's plan. I won't fight the currents of the black hole. I will surrender to the flow of the spiral and trust what I am shown. Dragonfly was very happy with Swan's answer and began to spin the magic to break the pond's illusion. Suddenly, Swan was engulfed by a whirlpool in the center of the pond. Swan weir Swan reappeared many days later but now she was graceful and white and long-necked <laughs> graceful and white and long-necked dragonfly was stunned swan what happened to you he exclaimed swan smiled and said dragonfly I learned to surrender my body to the power of great spirit and was taken to where the future lives. I saw many wonders high on sacred mountain. Because of my faith and my acceptance, I have been changed. I have learned to accept the state of grace. Dragonfly was very happy for Swan. Swan told Dragonfly of the many wonders beyond the illusion through her healing and acceptance of the state of grace. She was given the right to enter the dream time. So it is that when we learn to surrender to the grace and the rhythm of the universe and slip from our physical bodies into the dream time, Swan Medicine teaches us to be at one with all planes of consciousness and to trust in great spirit's protection. Mm. Hang on. If you pulled swan, it ushers in a time of altered states of awareness and of development of your intuitive abilities. Swan medicine people have the ability to see the future, to surrender to the power of great spirit, and to accept the healing and transformation of their lives. The swan card is telling you to accept your ability to know what lies ahead. If you are resisting your self-transformation, relax. It will be easier if you go with the flow. Stop denying that you know who is calling when the phone rings. Pay attention to your hunches and your gut knowledge. And honor your female intuitive side. Contrary. If you pulled swan in reverse, it is a warning that you must acknowledge what you know. So stop denying your feelings and clutching up. You may be bumping into furniture or forgetting what you are saying in mid-sentence. If so, this is a sign that you are not grounded. Jump in place and hold the top of your head as you do so. 
This will get you back in touch with Earth and keep you from wandering into a dreamy reality that lessens your focus. Baths help, as does going barefoot or doing some gardening. In any case, Swan Reverse says you need to pay some attention to your body. It can seem as if you're flying without a pilot license if you're not aware of when you take off or land. Not recognizing the shift from left brain to right brain is common when you are evolving spiritually. This is all a part of developing the intuitive side of your nature and is a sign that you are not being conscious of your entry into the other levels of awareness. In the development of higher mind, you are embarking on new territory that has rules or universal laws of its own. In the world of spirit, you need to pay close attention to the unseen. You may sense or feel a slightly different way, but this is gradual. Sometimes this shift is lost among your normal activities and you feel spaced out. At these moments, it is time to reconnect with Mother Earth. The solution to Contrary Swan is, one, notice your surroundings and touch the earth with your feet, hands, or both. Two, focus on one reality or the other. If you're being called to visit the dream time, stop what you are doing and be still. Enter the silence and empty your mind of chatter. Be receptive and open so that the message may enter your consciousness. Three, if you are just preoccupied daydreaming or spacey, you need to focus on doing some simple, some physical activity. Use the reasoning side of your brain to make a list of what you need to do next. And this will stop the clutter in your mind that may be causing the confusion. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Much love, big heart hugs.